Now, we will discuss design procedure. Let us first look at the evolution of design in general and in textile. Now, in the early days, engineering was an empirical skill. Bridges, buildings, machines, vehicles were designed based on experience and practical knowledge. That is what it all started. In this textile also, practical knowledge and skill relate to the production of many, many textile products. Here, experience and trial and error was the design protocol. That is, we used to design mostly based on experience and intuition and by trial and error. With interest in the science of fibers and textiles, there was tremendous growth of qualitative understanding. But design in textile still remained an empirical in nature. That is, as science developed, there was a lot of research also, which was done in the area of fibers, fabrics, yarns. So, a lot of understanding was happening. But even then, the designing technique was still very traditional and was empirical in nature. However, this was not so in other branches of engineering, where with the growth of science and knowledge about mechanics, quantitative predictions became possible and that is what changed the design procedures. So, as science developed and as knowledge about mechanics developed, quantitative prediction was possible and therefore, it changed the designing procedure. However, the application of this science and mechanics was adapted by other branches of engineering, but not so by the textile designers. There we lagged. Now, there is an absence of design culture in textiles and this is about engineering design culture we are discussing. Designing was there, people have developed very or designed very beautiful you know, uh, saris in India and they are so famous all over the country. There are beautiful designs also have been produced in other countries and these designs have made lot of differences in the trades. However, the engineering design culture was not there. The question that comes to our mind is why it was not there. One is that in most of the textile products, if you see what we use on a daily basis and the consumptions of such textile is maximum. In these textiles, the risk involved in the case of failure is very, very negligible. That is, there is hardly any risk of life if the design fails and the cost of individual item was also very, very low. Even still now they are very, very low. So, the risk is not there and the cost wise they are not very high. Therefore, there was no real pressure on the designer to ensure that the product succeeds, especially in applications where the risk of lives could be there. 
The other thing is there was no documented methodology which can be applied by the textile engineers in the design. That is also something which is missing. But and because of these two reasons probably the designs mostly remain experience based and intuition based. But what this culture is bound to change now due to many reasons and they have been listed here. The development of computers is one reason that the today's engineers are very, very familiar with the computers, they are becoming computer literate. So, we can make use of the computers for designing many textile products and we can visualize them on the computer screen before we really produce them. That means, we can have simulation softwares to visualize the design before they are really actually made. Besides, there is a diversity of fibers which are available now. Earlier, the fiber domain was very, very limited. We only had natural fibers like cotton, wool, silk, linen, which are mostly used for apparel products or home textile products. And we had some, we can say some technical grade fibers or industrial grade fibers, which are also natural like could be let us say manila, hemp or uh, your coir fibers, jute fibers. They, their use was only limited to industrial products of the Easter years. But today there is a diversity of fibers. There are many, many synthetic fibers which have been developed over the years and the manufacturing methods also have changed. We have modern technologies which are so different from the previous ones. Besides, the textile products are now finding applications in demanding areas in which we need engineering data for the design. That is, when it textile goes into the new areas, as we all know that technical textile is becoming very, very popular and we are finding that these unique textile products are finding applications in many engineering fields. So, we have application in civil engineering, applications in mechanical engineering because we are developing lot of composites. We have applications in biomedical engineering or in medical science. We have applications in agriculture. So, the use of textile is expanding. It is no more limited to only apparel grade products or home textile products. And if we want to use this in such new and more demanding applications, we have to make them in such a way that there they can satisfy the performance requirement of those applications. And therefore, we need to develop a proper engineering design culture in textiles. Now, here we are going to discuss the generic product development steps that is what is the development steps that we should follow when we try to develop some products or design some products. The steps that we are going to discuss is applicable not only to textile, but it could be in any 
branches of engineering, however, we have to design something new or we have to develop some new products. So, these steps are common irrespective of whether it is a textile product or not. So, let us look into this now. What we see here? The first step is planning. We have to first plan. We will discuss these steps in more details as we go through this course. So, first step is planning. Obviously, planning without planning we cannot do anything. Whatever we do in life, we all plan for it. All the students are planning for their career. So, if you do not have a plan, you may not end up with something which we wanted. So, one has to plan in advance always. So, planning is there and the plan has to be approved. Then we move forward to the next step. In an industrial setup, you have to think of now that when an organization or industry is involved, then before a commitment is made by the management for developing a new product, the management's approval is must. Therefore, right after planning, the we go for concept development, but in between this plan has to be approved. So, the approval process is there which lies in between planning and development of the concept. So, we develop the next step is develop once the plan is approved and there is a commitment from the management that yes, so much you can go ahead because any development of a product would need manpower, would need time, we need resources, material resources, time resources, equipment resources and that could be a team of people who will be involved in design and development of new products and therefore, the overall you know, scenario has to be seen by the top management and then only they can give an approval and once the approval is ready, then the design team will move forward, they go to the next step that is concept development. That is we try to develop a concept. We will discuss in details each and every step as I said more details afterwards. So, anyway the next step is developing a concept of the product. Now, after we develop the concept, then we go to the concept review. That is we allow people to think to come out with different types of concepts and then each of these concepts are discussed and debated in the design team and they are presented. So, this presentation of the concept is what is called concept review that is concepts are reviewed. So, once it goes through the concept review part, we go to the next step that is the actual design stage. So, in this design there are two part of the design, one is the broad design, the other part is the detailing of it. So, initially we start with a broad design. So, overall parameters are overall components that we need, what could be the specification of those components? A broad parameters are decided here in the broad design part and then goes to the detailing of those. So, design has you can say two parts designing the broad parameters and designing the detailing of those uh, parameters. Once that is done, then we go for again a review exercise. That is when we go for the detailing, we are trying to find out actually the specifications of each and every component that are going to be used in making that products. So, after this therefore, 
this review comes again once more tape. The idea of this review that every time we going through this review process in case there is something some mistakes are there, some error is there which might be has not been considered or might have missed our mind, probably they will be caught. And hence a review exercise is very, very important in the development process. So, once this specification review is over, so specifications are frozen temporarily a prototype development process starts. That is, we then develop a prototype of the product that we are planning to design. So, hence that is the prototype development. Once the prototype has been developed, so this is a kind of fabrication job that has to be done here. We go to the next step that is critical design review. Again, we go for critical design review at this stage so once the prototype is ready we try to see whether this is how it is looks like how it is going to perform so there is a review process at this stage also and then we also go for actual testing of the product so product will be tested initially we test them in the laboratory to see how does it going to perform and we can depending upon the products we may also go for field trials. So, testing is done in house testing first once we are satisfied then we go for maybe field trials also and based on these test results we may refine the design or we can refine the specifications these things will be done once the testing and refinement process is over and after that the actual production approval comes from the again from the top management that is once they are satisfied about the performance of the product the large scale production of the new product is then taken up because if the product fails in the market then there is a lot of you know, reputation which exists with a particular company that company reputation may be hurt. So, ache, no company, every company has an image in the market. They want to make sure that the image is not daunted. And therefore, the before it goes for mass scale production, where obviously a lot of money will be involved when it goes for mass scale productions. Hence, at the final stage the production approval is taken from the top management and then it goes for production. After that obviously, then it goes for sale. So, these are the steps which are actually involved in designing any product. Okay. From there we go to the next that is called spiral product development. What is this spirality means? We will now come to that. Look at this diagram. So, what you see here, first three steps are exactly same what we had seen earlier. What we are showing it here in between the broad design and the commercial productions, that has three small blocks showing detailed design, build and test. So, here what it shows after testing, if we find that the product is performance is not as per our expectations, then we go back and look into the detailed design aspects, where we have chosen different you know, components, whether we have chosen right components or not, which components have failed, how to improve the the performance of that component, should we go for a better material or not, things like that. So, detailed design aspects are then looked into critically and if required these are changed and again another prototype is built and again tested. So, it is a cycle 
that goes on. It is a kind of iteration that goes on few times before we finalize the design. So, after few iteration, the performance is the again you now checked and once the approval is taken from the top management and is goes for commercial production. This is how the uh, no, steps are basically it is the previous one, but this diagram is showing that testing, design, detailed designing, building, testing this process goes on few times in order to make sure that the performance of the product that we are aiming or we want to make that performance is as per our expectations or going beyond the expectations. Okay. The other design procedure which is followed sometimes while developing very complex systems development. There the first three steps are exactly same and then in the broad designs the we the entire big the design the entire design is then splitted into different sub designs. Sometimes we want to develop a complex like a designing of an aeroplane, it is a very complex machine or designing of a car is also a complex machine. These are very complex equipments where there are so many different types of parts are there, the different components are there. Some of them are maybe electronic components, some of them may be you know, related to computer or software, some of them are mechanical in nature, some of them are maybe polymeric in nature. So, in the broad design, the total design task is split into many, many sub tasks or total design is divided into smaller and smaller designs like design of part A as a shown here, design of part B, design of part C. So, that could be 3, we have shown it, it could be 3, 4, 5, whatever it is. So, total design splitted into design in small, small parts. Then each of them is designed by a team and it is tested. So, design A, part A, part B, part C, these are separately designed and tested and checked for performance and once they are performing as per our expectations, these part A, part B, part C, these are all integrated now and we make the total, we make integrate them so that we make the complete product now and then go for testing, then we go for testing. And again obviously, after test we check the performance of the system as a whole. And after that, once we are satisfied, it goes for approval for production by the top management and once they are satisfied with the test performance of the product as a whole, the approval is taken and it goes for production ramp up, that is we go for actual commercial production. So, this is what is also done when we want to develop a complex system. Like in our textiles, we can also develop, think of some complex designs are there, like designing of a uh, let us say space suit design. So, space suit design is a very, very complex activity where we need the expertise of not only textile engineers, but also we need the expertise of people belonging to different disciplines. Similarly, there are other products nowadays coming where there is integration of technology, there is integration of different disciplines which are coming together in order to develop some complex textile products. Okay. So, this is these are the different ways we can 
go for the development of the products. Now, we are going very to discuss about the very first uh, part of the design that is the planning part. So, we have said that the first step of the design process is the planning. So, what is there in planning? So, task in planning phase, the first task is identification of opportunities. See in a commercial setup, when an organization is there and they want to give you a responsibility to design something different, something new, then obviously the company has to see whether the opportunities exist today for a new product in the market or not, because this is a commercial venture. We are not designing for the sake of designing something and remaining satisfied with ourselves. We design a company perspective that we design something new when we feel that there is a market, we will be able to sell the product and we will be able to earn some profit out of it. Then only a company will go for new designs. So, therefore, it is important to know whether opportunities exist or not. So, identification of opportunities. Second is evaluation and prioritization of projects, the next step. We will discuss them in detail. The third step is allocation of resources in the planning part itself and timing for launch also we have to decide, so that we have a time frame we set up that we will take two years time to design this or one year time to design this, whatever it is depending upon the nature of the product. Some products designing may take three years, some product design may take one year, some may take six years. So, it will you know, vary depending upon the type and nature of the products. Anyway, so these are the four subtasks that we have to do while we are planning. Now, first one identification of opportunities. How do I identify that whether an opportunity exists or not? Ideas for new product or feature of an existing product. Sometimes the product may be new, which does not exist in the market, or it could be existing products, but we want to add some new features. So, these ideas will come from the marketing and sales personnel because they are directly in touch with the customers. It can come from the research organizations. CSIR labs, university research departments, it, there is, could be current or potential customers, suppliers or your business partners. They can also say something about the possible you know, opportunity. The other most important thing is documented frustration and complaints of customers. So, when customers are not satisfied with the existing products. We have to understand why they are not satisfied, what are their complaints, what are their frustrations. If we have this information with us, then that gives you an idea that yes, there is a need to redesign the project in order to improve its performance or in order to maybe that we need to add some new features which the customers are looking for or it could be the implication of trend in lifestyles or demographics. People lifestyle changes, products which are consumer goods. Here the demand for consumer goods uh, will change as the lifestyle changes, demographic, demographic changes. Demographic means suppose in a country, the younger peoples are more in number. So, you need product, you need then trousers or shirts or ladies suits more in number, not only more in number, but their change in lifestyle will actually you know, drive us to design something which is different. 
which suits their lifestyle. So, lifestyle and demographics both are important. The other thing is carefully study the competitor's product. So, we also need to study the competitor's product. Me, my competitors has come to the market with something new, something different, then that means that there is an opportunity to redesign my own product and also place my products in the market. So, these are the various you know, uh, reasons or you can say the opportunities. The other thing is tracking the status of emerging technologies which has a potential to develop new products. That means, if a new technology appears in the market, some manufacturing technology, then it can give us maybe a product which may be superior in nature and therefore, the a superior product will always have a better market. So, we have to always keep a track on the status of emerging technologies, which has a potential to develop the new products. We go to the from here to the next stage opportunities, how to identify, we have discussed. Now, we go to the next evaluation of projects. Now, if we, there are few project ideas are there, that these are the project ideas which we have, then we need to also evaluate them to find out which one is most suitable now or which one we should pursue. So that evaluation should be based on competitive strategy of the company, the market segmentations and technological trajectories. So, what are these? We are going to discuss now competitive strategy. The competitive strategy basically means that it depends to what is the vision of a company. If the company assigns great importance on new technologies and use it for product development. So, companies see the strategy could be technological leadership or it could be cost leadership or it could be customer focus or it could be imitative. These are the four different aspect of competitive strategy that the company may decide that we will be a leader in technology and therefore, any idea which gives you or it gives an edge in terms of technological leadership should be taken up and accordingly products will be designed or developed. So, the company may wants to maintain the cost leadership, how by using superior manufacturing methods. So, that also could be another idea for a company that we want to have a cost leadership that I will be able to give a product where people can say that there is a value for money. So, that could be a strategy and accordingly the projects can be chosen where there is a possibility of giving a product a certain cost. So, that there is a cost performance benefit. The other thing could be customer focus. It basically means the company focuses on new and existing customers to assess their changing needs preferences and develop products accordingly. So, companies work with big buying houses like Gap or Nike, where the idea of the company is to satisfy the customers or the loyal customers that the company may be having. The, the company other thing is imitative in nature basically means the company explores which new products are successful in the market and when viable opportunities arrive, it quickly launches new products imitating the successful competitors. Such kind of companies are do not, they are basically do not want to take any risk. So, they are basically followers in a way. So, they who are waiting and they are trying to find out which products are successful in the market 
and so once they are satisfied, see that this is the product which is selling more in the market, they will try to imitate that product and start selling in the market. So, these are the companies which are basically followers of the others. They are not taking initiative in terms of designing something new, something different. They expect somebody else to do it the job and they will simply imitate or copy the products and then sell it to sell it to the to the customers. So, anyway depending upon the vision of the company, the strategy of the story, the the, uh, the the product uh, project can be chosen. The other thing is market segmentations that could be the customers can be thought of belonging to different market segments. Like we can have age wise market segmentations, children, youth, middle aged people or old people or income wise common man, middle class, rich, niche. Region wise could be north, south, east, east or west, the ST is missing here. So, market segmentation it could be another important idea while choosing a project and the other one is technological trajectory. That is you see that technology in evolves with time, every technology especially new ones they evolve with time and there is a performance time curve which looks like a the letter S as shown in the right hand side. This curve what does it show that when a new product completely new product arrives in the market when the time is somewhere here the performance is low initially and then the performance quickly rises. So, performance versus time plot it shows this part of the graph it rises very very fast and finally, it approaches maturity when some natural technological limit is reached and it may become almost obsolete after some time. So, this is what also happens that is many products has been seen that there is a S shape trajectory of the development of the product. So, when some companies may decide that this is a new technology which is coming and if I incorporate it in the design my product will sell and this is in somewhere and the this part right now. So, the possibilities of you know, change is very high this is time and better to use this right now and when the performance is not going to change much then there is no point in again you no know, thinking uh, or, or you know, continuing with this existing technology. So, this development goes through this especially when it comes to new products and uh, this also could be one of the consideration that of choosing a particular product and improving it and improving it faster and faster. So, they capture the market and by the time it has reached the play to by that a lot of other players will come into the market and they will make use of it also and competition will rise and the profitability will then will go down. Okay. So, and the last two st steps are resource allocations and timing for lunch. See budget resources, what are those resources? Manpower, material, the fabrication, cost, etcetera this has to be budgeted. So, that we know that this particular project will need so much amount of money and we have to complete the project within this budgeted resource. So, this is also could be a part of the planning process that we must 
plan in advance to have some idea that how much is going to be the overall total cost of the development. So, that has to be budgeted. The other thing is when to launch the product and what is the guideline for this launching? So, not to the market better, but poor quality product never to be introduced. That is, we should make sure that as quickly we can introduce a product to the market, the better it is, but that should not be at the cost of compromising on quality. And the other thing is market readiness, which is releasing improvements too quickly frustrate customers. That also we have to remember that if we keep on changing the models very frequently, then customers will not like it. Like it is happening especially in the not in textile sectors, not much, but in the case of mobiles, let us say the mobile, the models are changing very fast and a or a computer also, uh, a computer or a mobile which is 2 years or 3 years old, it will become obsolete. So, because the companies are coming out with new models which are new features and whose performance is better, but if this is introduced too fast, then the customers will get frustrated and they feel that I have spent so much of money and the customer will have some, no, some expectation that this money I have spent and therefore, it should be with me for 3 years, 5 years, whatever it is. But before that is something better comes, then he will have a feeling of getting cheated. So, therefore, we have to see that how quickly the market expects a change or a new product or addition of new features in a existing products. Similarly, releasing too late may cause lagging behind the competitors. So, at the same time, we see that today there is a lot of competitions. If I am too late in introducing my product, then I will lag behind. So, that is also. Now, we go to the project statement that is we have to give a title to the project when you are writing the project and the we have to make a statement also. So, the test statement must give you or must contain what target market what is the key business goal that is in terms of cost, quality, financial performance or market share and the third one is some description of the product very general mentioning customers benefit. These are the three aspects which should be there in a paragraph where we will write the title of the project, what is the target market of it, what are the key business goal that is what could be the advantage of the company out of it and what we are going to offer to our customers and little general the description about the product that is what are could be the benefit of the customers. These things should be written in the project statement. Whenever we think about project, there are some assumptions and some constraints also like service. If customer service is critical for the business, level of service requirements should be stated. That is in some cases, uh, some servicing is required for the product. In the textile products, such kind of servicing is not really required in most of the apparel goods, there is hardly, there is no need of servicing and, uh, but in other products, because what we are discussing is general in nature, not confined to textile only, it is applicable to any type of product. So, therefore, now these statements are coming that the customer service is critical for business, level of service requirement should be stated and the maintenance instruction should be given. Whenever say if you buy something, so you buy electronics product, you buy a, suppose you buy a, a, a TV, you will find that the you will get instruction manual, you buy a gadget for the kitchen, you will find that there is a instruction 
a manual is there and you read that they have given how to maintain it, how to operate it, what are the various parts, where to contact, such informations are given. So, that is what is service requirement if is required it should be stated. The other thing is environment, environment sustainability has to be kept in mind for some products during development because today the sustainability is becoming very, very important throughout the world. So, and sometimes it is becoming very you know selling point also that we are you can say that I am developing a product which is sustainable in nature. I am going to save so much of energy it is not going to pollute the environment. So, today sustainable product development is also becoming very, very important. That is whatever we design, we have to make sure that there is a sustainability angle which is there. The other thing is manufacturing, that is are the existing production system capable to produce the product and what are their production capacity, we have to also keep it in mind keeping in a given industry. So, what kind of technology they have and the product that we are going to design it should be you no, know, it should be able to be produced with the existing kind of technology which is already existing in that manufacturing plant. And what is the total capacity of production such things should be also there. So, let us say I write a project statement and let us say it is as an example the development of a comfort denim. This is the title of the product. The product description is lightweight stretchable quick dry denim. It is given in a form of format of a table, but we can make a you know a paragraph also out of it. Okay. So, the product description is lightweight stretchable quick dry denim. Key business goals to align with the company's vision of retaining leadership in the denim business. The primary market are casual wear for young techies and university students. It can capture 50 percent of the sales in the primary market that is what is expectations and product introduction on or before certain time also can be decided that by October like suppose in India the festival time comes sometimes in October there is festival sort of festival throughout the country. So, one can decide that by that time September the product will be launched so that people are going to buy it. The secondary market could be the handbag and jackets and other things that come to the mind that is what we can do using the same product, what other sub products or little different products we can make using the same material and where it can go. So, that is we can say with the denim fabrics we can also make some handbags, we can make jackets and uh, one can think of some other things also could be made out of it. What are the assumptions and constants that is the steady supply of raw material we are assuming and cotton to be imported is a kind of you know, constants are there. Lycra from abroad we have to get it nowadays Lapka is available here also. But one can say there some raw materials just give an idea some kind of some raw materials may not be available in the country and maybe we have to get it from abroad or to import it. So, whenever we try to import something it is a kind of constant because importing always means there is a time lag and uh, sometimes things may be available in time, sometimes may not be available or there is a dependency on some other country. So, these are kind of constants which are there. The stakeholders are young customers, production engineers, the distributors, retailers, shareholders, all of them are basically stakeholders in it. So, something like this statements can be written about a given products. With this we close this particular lecture that is what we have discussed 
is what are the various design steps which are involved in developing a product and what is the planning part of the design. So, we have to plan it well in a in a organizational setup and then only if we do it in advance, then the possibilities of going something wrong in future <coughs> that is we go ahead for 6 months we work on it and then we come to know that uh, something has gone wrong, so it will not going to work because something has not been considered. Things like that may happen sometimes. So, to avoid that we have to have a very beautiful planning. So, planning activity what exactly it should be that is what we have discussed also. With this let us close today's session. Thank you.